Hi guys, um, I'm going to show you my 3D printed uh, weight pins for storing your Olympic weights on your rack. Um, I might make later versions, but right now this is the only version. Um, there's two of them. This is the first one I've done. Uh, it's a prototype. This is the second one. Um, all of them are bolt through the center of the pin, so you'll have to drill all the way through your rack if you don't already have holes for them. Um, so this is the first version. Um, for those of you who are 3D printing your own set of these, because you've bought the file, um, these are some of the tips I have for you. This one's designed to be printed just like this, so this will be your print bed. There we go. So this will be your print bed down here. It'll print standing straight up and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Uh, I have had four 45 pound plates on this and a 35. Left them there in the heat and stuff. I live in a desert, so it's probably about 105 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So you can imagine what it was in there. Um, and you can tell this pin's not warped or anything. So um, they work pretty good. Uh, the reason I've changed my design a little bit from this one, which is kind of more of your standard looking weight pin, like a, like a steel one or something like that. Um, it took a long time to print for one. Um, for two, I wasn't sure the strength because as you're pulling on this, you're pulling to separate the layers. Uh, so this is the other version. This is the one I'm going to be selling to my store. So you'll print these laying down flat like this. Um, that's why there's two cutouts on them. Um, and then they've got kind of your cantilever press. So you know, the just to help resist the pull on the bolt. They do not print threads on the inside. Um, so if you're ordering these from me, um, physical print, which means you'll be getting one like this, there's two ways of doing that. One, without hardware, so you're just gonna get it raw. Um, you'll need a tap if you plan to tap these. Um, if you don't want to tap these, that's fine. You can actually just run a bolt straight in here. It's going to be a lot harder, but there is some benefits to that. Um, namely, if you're running this bolt in here and not tapping, it, the whole print basically becomes like a giant nylon locking nut. Uh, so it's going to resist this getting pulled out pretty damn well. Um, so these ones I've tapped, so if you order these with hardware, I'll tap them for you and send the bolt, of course and the washer. Um, when I'm tapping these, as you can tell, I'm only tapping them about 75% thread engagement. So that means this last part of this bolt's going to cut its own threads so that that way there's still some locking nut action going on. Um, that's how I've done them so far and they've held up great like that. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Um, if you're 3D printing your own, you could do this however you want. Uh, the 3D printed ones that I'm selling, just the digital files, you can either do M16 bolts or a 5 8 bolt. Uh, like that. So that's a 5 8 that's an M16. They're about the same size. Um, if you wanted a bigger hole diameter for yours to 3D print, let me know and I might change the file for you. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a hassle. One thing to keep in mind, you are going to need a big bulky washer on this side of the bolt just to help keep the bolt from getting a you know kind of bending your power rack and stuff as it pulls on it so um, that's kind of the gist of it if you've got any questions please let me know um, next we're gonna go to install um, some tips if you have a cheaper Chinese rack like me and you have to drill your rack to install these um, this step bit is gonna be your friend um, you want to drill just a tiny bit bigger than your bolt hole, but not very much. So these are M16 bolts, the ones that I'm using because I have a rep rack from China. Um, a 5 8 hole is just too small, but the next size up for me that's a good snug fit is 11 16 So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, if you don't have to drill holes for your power rack, you're awesome. Um, I, unfortunately, I have a cheaper rack and I don't mind putting the work in. So um, that's what we're going to do next is just go drill these and install these. Now do not over tighten these. You'll, you'll get them pretty snug and you'll feel it and that should be good to go. So uh, next point I'll show you uh, a couple of these installed and some weights hanging on them. Uh, 
Um, so real quick, some tips for 3D printing these. Um, if you wanted to print your own set, you'll see how rough this is. And you can kind of see the layer lines and stuff. There's a reason for that. Do not print these with a small nozzle. If you are not comfortable changing your nozzle size, this isn't the print for you. For these to be strong, the minimum nozzle diameter I would recommend is a 0.8 millimeter. These are printed on a one millimeter. That's why they're so strong. They have three perimeters, 50% triangular infill. Um, same with this one. This one's the exact, well, this one actually has 40% infill, so it's a little less. Same perimeters. Um, you can't really get away with printing with a smaller nozzle on these. You're just, you're going to drop your weights all over your floor. So I definitely wouldn't do that. Other thing, do not print these in PLA. Do not print these in PLA. I cannot say that enough. I've had other people print my designs in PLA and then wonder why they break or stuff. That's because PLA is a hobbyist filament for figurines. It's not meant to take this kind of tensile strength that's going to be going through it while in the summertime heat. So it's just not meant for that. Um, I'm printing mine out of hips. It's a high impact polystyrene. It's basically ABS plastic, but it's meant to take some more impact and have more strength to it. Um, you'll probably recognize it as something that's a dissolvable filament. And that's true if you wanted to use it for supports for ABS, but you know, that's not what I'm using it for. So that's why I've had such great results. Um, you could probably use ABS. Um, I would think PETG is a little bit stronger than ABS, but I, in this application, I don't know if it would be right. Uh, so that's just some 3D printing tips for you. Um, you're definitely going to want an enclosure either way, and you're definitely going to want your heated bed and some really good bed adhesive. So um, that's it for that. Several months later. All right, guys. So. Uh, these are the weight pins all installed on my rack. Uh, you pretty much see how they're supposed to come, how you're supposed to mount them. You need a washer on the back side just to make sure that the bolt doesn't get pulled through. Um, that's probably not going to happen, but it just helps distribute the load. Uh, you know, I, I suppose most questions are going to be about strength. Um, like I've said before, uh, this bottom pin down there um, has been on here for a couple of months. Um, I had four 45 pound plates and a 35 pound plate sitting on it uh, on and off as I worked out for weeks and didn't have any problems, no uh, drooping or anything. Um, that is the old design. Uh, these are the new design. And what I mean by that is they're printed stronger and uh, use less material. So, focus, there we go. So you can see it's flat here. Um, and that enables for stronger printing on the bed, and I could print um, it laying down instead of vertically. Uh, you definitely add some more strength. Um, so, what is this? 25, 50, 75. So, this is 75 pounds. It's 105 degrees in here right now. Um, this isn't air cooled or anything like that. Um, and I've had, um, I threw a couple 45s actually on the lower one and tested it out for a while. Um, it holds up pretty good. Uh, one thing I will say, the more you use these, you'll see the, because it is a hips filament, um, it's a high impact filament. Um, as you scratch them, they'll kind of turn a little dull or white or something, but it, I mean, it, it's your gym. I would suppose you're supposed to beat the crap out of everything. Um, to kind of, ow. To kind of help stop you from uh, banging the weights up against your rack. Um, there is a spacer built in with these, um, just to kind of help space the weight plates off of this. Um, it also helps you kind of get you, get your hands back there, or if you have J-cups or something, they'll help you uh, still be able to use them. Uh, that's pretty much it. So you can see I've got, it's not just one, I've got them on both sides of my rack. I've been using them now for for a month. Since I shot the last video where I mounted them up, I wanted to to really give them a month's worth of use. It's This is filmed on August 30th, so I wanted them out here for a month in the high heat just to make sure that they would hold up just fine and stuff. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know, and I'll be glad to help answer them. Um, 
if you need a custom length or something like that or if you've 3d printed your own set or bought the files and you would like um, some tips on printing them just let me know um, thanks guys